Discord, share it with everyone you know. They can check out the game, live play by play, as usual, by Adam Gardner and Stephen Wade. Again, youtube.com backslash SCHS Sports or search SCHS Sports on YouTube for all the action. Nothing, nothing. Test, testing, testing. We got it. We got it, ladies and gentlemen. Fifteen games till, fifteen minutes till tip off. Northeast Eagles and your Decatur Seahawks. Stay tuned. Hello, hello. Testing again. Test, test, test. That's right. Fifteen minutes, nineteen seconds till tip off. Go Hawks.
Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength, that my pain was my motivation. Maybe I led you to believe that basketball was a God-given gift and not something I worked for every single day of my life. Maybe I destroyed the game. Or maybe you're just making excuses. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Decatur High School's administration, faculty, staff, and students welcome you to the Hawks Nest. Your host for tonight's MPSSAA 3A South Region Regional Final. Tonight we welcome the Eagles from Northeast High School in Anne Arundel County. If I could have everyone's attention for some very important announcements. Stephen Decatur High School welcomes everyone to tonight's contest. As each team represents the respective schools, we remind you that honoring the values of sportsmanship is the essence of every athletic contest. We ask you to accept the responsibility as a fan of this game to show respect for players, respect for coaches, respect for officials, and respect for those around you. Your support and cooperation will allow all athletes involved in this game to achieve and demonstrate their best. Please be aware that this contest is being live streamed with both audio and video. Conversations in the stands may be audible on the live stream, so please be mindful when conversing, cheering, or commenting on the game. Worcester County Public School's number one priority is to ensure the safety and security of our players, the coaches, officials, and spectators. Help us keep our facility and athletic venues safe by immediately reporting any safety concerns to law enforcement or school administration. Please familiarize yourself with the location of the nearest exit should an unlikely emergency evacuation be required. Remember, if you see something, say something. Now, if you'd please rise and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem, we ask that all gentlemen remove all hats and head coverings for the duration of the anthem. Now let's meet our starting lineups. First for the visiting Eagles. Playing guard, wearing number 22, sophomore Anthony Sheehan. At forward, number one, junior Jada Spiefer. At center, number 23, junior Chase Buttry. At guard, wearing zero, junior Cameron Albury. And starting at center, number three, junior Shamar Johnson. The Eagles are coached by Roger O'Day, assisted by Coach Keynes, Chris Albury, and Coach Chisholm. Seahawks fans, get on your feet and make some noise 
for your starting five. At guard, a five foot ten inch sophomore wearing number one, Zachary Baker. At forward, a six foot three inch sophomore wearing number three, Tribe Wide. At guard, a five foot ten inch junior wearing number five, Jaden Hudson. At guard, a six foot two inch sophomore wearing zero, David Chandler. And at forward, standing six feet five inches tall, a junior wearing number 23, Bryson Coleman. The Seahawks are coached by B.J. Johnson and assisted by Jeff LeVan, Ty Northrum. All those not in attendance, to catch out the live, to catch all the action, live stream, play by play, Stephen Wade and Adam Gardner on the mic, so check that out all night long. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you back to the Hawks Nest for the regional championship. Stephen Decatur hosts Northeast High School. My name is Adam Garner alongside Stephen Wade. Stephen, as always, ask, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. This is an excellent Thursday night. A lot of energy here in the Hawks Nest. A little bit of a Hawaiian theme we got going on as we're ready for some playoff basketball in the regional final. As the tip is immediately won, and what a play to start it off. That's Agent Zero out there. David Chandler, 26 points last game. Off to a hot start already. Was very active on both sides. Had a couple monster blocks and had the heavy offensive workload for Steven Decatur. As a quick layup goes, that's Chase Buttrey for Northeast. Again, we saw last time in their last matchup, Decatur played with a lot of pace against Oxen Hill on both sides. Oxen Hill also played with pace. Jane Hudson's three is no good, and the rebound will go to Northeast. Driving in, and an offensive foul. Bryson Coleman draws an early charge. That's Pfeiffer driving in for Northeast. Got to have plays like that early. Uh -huh, that's the little things that make the difference. Steven, I always love to ask you, what are your steps to Seahawks' success tonight to All win right. the regional championship? So great game against Oxen Hill last time out. I talked about team defense, worked really well, limiting the Clippers got to get right back to it team defense also taking care of the ball 26 turnovers last game I mean if you I were to critique one thing that would be the main thing taking care of the ball limiting the turnovers and one thing this is actually something coach Johnson told us guard rebounds he said last game Bryson was doing a great job boxing out and he needs his guards to secure those rebounds he said maybe even getting 10 plus out there with Coleman boxing out he also mentioned guard rebounds will win them the game. Whatever they can do to find a way to grit out a win against his solid Northeast team. In their meeting against Bennett, which got him here to play Decatur, a couple of their leading scorers, wearing number three, Shamar Johnson, at 25 for Northeast, as well as Anthony Sheehan with 15 and Cameron Albury with 19. Albury wearing zero and Shaheen wearing 22. Couple back and forth passes. Ends up in a Pfeiffer three. And Northeast gets out to an early lead. Great ball movement and patience there, not forcing a shot. And some careless turnovers to start. As Coach Johnson will go to his bench early. As you see, the first person coming off the bench is going to be Jaron Hudson. He played a big role in their last game, hitting down a couple threes. Checking in for Tribe Wise, who had that early turnover a second ago. Again, we see another team showing Seahawks some pressure. 
They seem not really to have much struggles with it as of late, but another turnover here early. Limiting turnover so far, has it been? Has it been it? No, that's three so far for the Seahawks early in this one. Another open three, Cameron Albury. A good start for Northeast. Another deflected pass. Got to find some continuity on offense. Ooh. Yeah, that was Anthony Sheehan, number 22 for the Eagles, getting up there, deflecting that pass, getting it out of bounds, making Decatur start over. This team's definitely got some length. Over seven players that are six foot three or taller. It's going to be tough to work around them. Zakari Baker shoots an air ball from the corner. Good look, though. Nonetheless, and Pfeiffer will push. Allberry an open three again, no. And there's a guard rebound. Chandler looking to push up court. Baker. So efficient in the fast break. And oh going my. quick. That's a monster block by Chandler. But they turn it right back over. Student session gets back on their feet, but another ghost defensive play. Jaron Hudson with a block. Chandler to push it to Baker. Driving in and a blocking foul. He'll have free throws. Turning defense into offense. We've said it so many times throughout this season. Taking a look back, this full sequence here. What a great block by Chandler. Mm -hmm. It was a great block. Really, I don't know how I would describe that other than maybe like a little bit ferocious. Chandler. Ferocious. That's it. See, I actually know what that word means. Yeah, there you go. But I mean, just no mercy with that one. You know, Send it right back at him. As these games have gone on, I feel like we've gone less and less away from the shoe game. But real quick, I mean, let's take a look at this great block just coming from the weak side. Ferocious. Great way to de uh, describe it. But going back to the shoe game, Shamar Johnson, Northeast, uh, their leading Ooh, scorer. Look at those. I believe he's the one wearing the neon greens. Yeah, there's a more of a more of a lime green Just or something. We have a lane violation, so I believe that might mean Baker will go back and get another crack at a second free yeah. throw. But back to the block. Followed it right up by a turnover. You can feel the energy in here just kind of disappear. Yeah. yeah, just disappeared, sank right after that. Got to build off of the momentum. Yeah, exactly. After big plays, can't get too caught up in the moment. Can't, you know, get careless or, you know, speed the game up too much. Especially after big plays, got to just keep with it, keep the momentum rolling. Absolutely. I'm not, uh, Coleman gets the offensive rebound and ties it up with the layup. And I'm all for playing with pace, but you got to play under control. That's the big thing. Northeast has numbers. Baker reaches in, hands in the cookie jar. Definitely saw contact. There's a foul there. And it should send Jadis Pfeiffer to the line for Northeast. I feel like we say it every game, but free throws add up. They're going to be as yes, important in this game as it will for the rest of the year for both teams. As the first free throw is well short. Crowd letting them hear it at the line. Misses both. Got to crowd the rebound, and Northeast will have another chance at it. Got to get the rebounds. Got to limit second chance points. Look at this offensive rebound here by Coleman on the other end. Loose ball. Hustling for it. Gets the easy layup. Yeah, that was Johnson. Just couldn't secure it. Bryson was right in position to grab it. Length and strength. The unicorn. He does it all. Wild shot there, Anthony Sheehan can't get it to go, and Chandler will look to try and push it up court. They'll reset it back up, David Chandler across court, Jaden Hudson catch and shoot three, in and out. Again, with a court at only 80 feet long, it's almost inevitable that they'll play with pace as well, have another whistle blown. Mm -hmm. Last game against Oxen Hill, Seems like the trend in the first half was letting both teams play. Here early, we're seeing a lot more free throws. Maybe not letting them play as much. Almost halfway through the first eight apiece for both teams. 
It seems like this, most of the student section got the memo for the Hawaiian theme. Yeah, mostly. I, I see a few people that, you know, weren't in the know, didn't get the memo, but that's fine. They're still here, still showing support. Absolutely, and that's all that matters. Pfeiffer at the line makes his first. So after missing both, he gets his next two to go and brings Northeast back up to two as they remain. So that one, two, two press. Baker going up aggressive. It's a good take. Nice aggression, he couldn't get the layup to go. Kick out, three from Sheehan. No, deflection, they get it back. Still a loose ball and it'll stay with Northeast. That putback yeah. layup, Chase Buttry with the miss, but they'll inbound it underneath. They're on the side. Yeah, you can already start to see it. Decatur struggling just a little bit to grab some of these rebounds and secure them. Something right. that could definitely hurt them down the stretch. Absolutely noted earlier. I mean, a lot of players over six foot three for this team. This is a tall Northeast team. Definitely have the length to their advantage. Coleman chases that rebound and gives it to Chandler. Finally, with a slow of the pace a little, so we'll see what they can do on this offensive possession. Hudson to Hudson. Jaden calling for a screen. Good look for Chandler. Ooh, just a clean shot. Nothing but net there. Agent zero. Very good at basketball. Mm -hmm. Excellent defensive play, Zakari Baker. On the run, that's a great finish. Oh, Zakari Baker. Going in with speed, great body control, settling himself, getting it to go. In the blink of an eye, it's a five-point swing to Cater back up three. Student section loud. Deflection, and it'll stay with Northeast. They look like Albury dribbled that off Jaron Hudson's foot before it went out of bounds. You know, a big thing about this Decatur defense, they cause a lot of deflections. No matter who's on the floor, always seems to be a lot of loose balls. Pfeiffer driving in. We got a whistle blown. Looks to be a foul on Chandler. That'll be his first. Definitely don't want to see foul trouble here early. For either team, you want to see an even matchup mm -hmm. through four quarters. Yeah, absolutely. Quick pass into Johnson. It was an open look. He couldn't get it to go. And now Decatur on the other end will push. Jaron Hudson had the look. Didn't have the accuracy. And Northeast will look to push it. All bear at the ball. It's a nice set of moves. Too much on the layup. Johnson's there to clean it up. Allberry attracted two defenders on that floater, leaving Johnson wide open. Nice look inside. Coleman, yes. Beautiful look, beautiful feed there from Chandler. Finding Coleman. And we got to travel. Some steps. I mean, you can see Coleman putting a hand up, wanting it. He knew he was open. Chandler found him quickly. Jaron Hudson coming out for Tribe Wise. That was a nice look underneath by Chandler. Coleman did the rest. Go look underneath the Coleman. Try to get it to Wise. Ended up in Baker's hands, fortunately. Back up top with two minutes to go. Chandler a blur. We know this. Can't get the finish. Fight for it. And Northeast will end up with it. Allberry. Crowd is alive tonight. That might be an understatement. Allberry driving in, nowhere to go. Johnson now to Pfeiffer, and that steps. Some more steps. <laughs> Student section showing off some basketball IQ. You, in fact, can't do that. Absolutely. Traveling is not allowed in the game of basketball. A deflection on the half court, and it'll stay with Decatur. Might want to possibly try some bounce passes as Northeast is predicting those over the head passes getting a lot of deflections yeah and as you mentioned with their height easy to jump up there and kind of get a deflection if not get a steal absolutely adding the wingspan to their height which makes them even taller Chandler in the corner looking for somewhere to go always looking for the right pass swings it Jaden Hudson a three 
No. Nice hustle by Bryson. And Decatur will get a second chance at it. Chandler a pump fake. A couple jabs back out to Baker. Kick. Hudson had another open look. Pass it up. Short corner three can't go. A couple missed shots by Jaden Hudson, but nonetheless a good look. Yeah, lots of good looks. Shots haven't been off by much. Might have to keep hitting them. Just Put listen. up a little shooter confidence there. Jaden Hudson is everywhere on defense and ends up with the rebound. What a great defensive possession by Jaden Hudson. Wise looking to push. Looks like there was, he was asking for contact. He ends up turning it over. And Pfeiffer is fouled on the floor. Can look at that steal. A bit earlier ago by Baker. A couple minutes back. Read the passing lane beautifully. And then making that athletic finish look way easier than it is. Under a minute to go. About 40 seconds. Decatur nursing a three-point lead. Pass inside Johnson. Oh, oh what a fly. And Baker has it. What a finish. And, and one. one. Zakari Baker turning big defense into some great offense. You could give that Coleman block an assist if you wanted to. What a block from Coleman. Reading the play like a book. Baker, it only took him two dribbles before he counted the layup and won. An excellent fast break offense team for Decatur. Yeah. That was Deion White picking up the foul there, it looked like. White number five for Northeast, his first. Yeah, a little bit of collision after Zakari made the layup. It was a late whistle. It took some of the fans in this stadium to kind of realize it was an and one, but got even louder once they realized it. A packed crowd. I think it's fair to say it's sold out. Yeah, the, the doors said so. Sold out. Got a Free throw goes in and out, but you could see 20 for Northeast. That's Johnny Hutton. He jumped early. So Baker, for the second time tonight, will get a second chance at a missed free throw. And he gets it. 18, 12, 31 seconds to go. Cameron Alberry. 19 points against Bennett will bring it up. Zero guarding zero. Twelve seconds to go. About a one second differential between shot and game clock. They want the last shot. Smart decision by Northeast. Floater from Alberry can't get it. They still got a chance. Jane Hudson from half court. No. He smiles on his way back. Great defense there. Great first quarter from the Seahawks. He's going to say an even better start for Decatur as they look to get another regional championship under their belts. 18-12 will be back in a minute. Back here for this second quarter. Steven, a question sparked in my mind during the break. I know I asked you this a while back, but I can't quite remember. As I look out into the court, for Northeast, I see a lot of scattered shoe designs and colors. It's kind of all over the place, mm -hmm. but very vibrant colors nonetheless. 
Decatur, on the other hand, all color coordinated, all the same shoe. Which do you prefer? Do you like color coordination, I, or do you like kind of the scattered looks? You know, I, I like them both. I like them both. You know, whenever you can get nice team coordination that matches, you know, team colors, that's nice. But also, I feel like basketball is a sport where you can kind of mix up the shoe game, have different colors, still looks good. As Dion White sinks that jumper, nothing but net on that one. But yeah, I, I like them both. I like I like both these teams' shoe games currently. Nothing to complain about. Coleman looking to hit a jump shot, can't get it. Deflection and it'll be Corral Johnny Hutton for Northeast, and they'll push it immediately. Pfeiffer going into the body of Wise. We got an offensive. It's going to be a travel actually on Pfeiffer. He's had a couple of those early. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Coleman was there, ready for the block. Pfeiffer listed at 6'4". He's a junior. Got a lot of length at the guard position. Decatur looking to swing. Jaron Hudson in the corner. Now Tribewise looking out. Some good ball movement. Jaron Hudson a three. No. <laughs> nice rebound wise. A spin and a foul. Yeah. And I was just about to say, great first quarter from the Seahawks. If I were to want to see anything, it would be maybe these two Hudsons getting going from three. Um, Jaden had some great looks. Jaron with a good look there. Shots aren't off by much. I mean, just got to get them going. And when they're in a rhythm, I mean, we saw what Jaron did last game, sinking two clutch free or clutch threes. Absolutely. And we, we sure know Jaden can shoot it as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Both the Hudsons are lethal shooters from downtown. Like I said, Jaron Hudson was a big contributor in the kind of momentum shift as he hit both of those threes when it was tied at 28 apiece, made it 34-28 in the game against Oxen Hill. From that point on, Decatur never looked back. Wise goes one of two at the line. Floater from Albury, too much on it. Wise the rebound looks to push Jaden Hudson. Jaron had nowhere to go. Left his feet. Nice move from Pfeiffer. Kicking. Aubrey a three. Nothing but net. <laughs> right in front of the student section. See Wise. And we got steps on this side. Tribe Wise. Yeah. Traveled. Little three pointer. Kind of silenced a few students, especially in the front row. Albury making sure they saw that three. Not much to say if a opposing teams or if opposing player switches in a three. Can't say much about it. Yeah, especially right right in front of you. That's. I mean, what are you gonna say? It's insult to injury. We have a push off. Albury pushed off a of Jaron Hudson offensive foul. Chandler looking to push, look at that. Can't finish it. Coleman looking to clean up. Look at Chandler soaring through. Trying to get the finish corralled by four defenders. It's blocked. On the other end, Albury dribbling into three Decatur defenders. Pfeiffer cleans it up and he'll reset it. Mm -hmm. Really smart play by Pfeiffer. Really fast pace, a lot of sloppy basketball being played there. Brings it out, slows it down. Trying to get this offense set. Some off ball screen set. Shamar Johnson as we have a player on the ground. It's Deion White. Pfeiffer ends up having to pull up. Can't get it. Gets his own miss. Hop step, dribble layup, ties it up. Got to play under control for Decatur. Again, not, can't let the moment get too big. Jane Hudson just missing. Again, hasn't missed by much on his three point attempts. Would like to see him keep shooting. We know he's very capable. And once he gets hot. It's hard to guard him. Nice job by Albury, but a great Whoa. help defense from Wise. Translating into a block. Hudson going up with it. We got a charge. Pfeiffer draws the charge, and Northeast will get it back. Yeah, but a great block from Wise on the other end. Just smacking that out of the air. As Hudson and Pfeiffer took a big collision. Underneath, Baker will come back in. 
Jaron Hudson back out. Coach Johnson makes sure to dap him up as he goes his way onto the bench. Hudson has tried to solidify himself as that six-man role. Was a starter for a large portion of the season until they got their players fully back. High arcing shot from Albury just misses and another guard rebound. Chandler is going to push it. And he is fouled, almost got it. He had one to go, and still go to the line for two. Yeah. And Jaden Hudson hasn't been getting going from three yet, but definitely has made an impact on defense all over the place, disrupting this Eagles offense and even getting some of the guard rebounds that we touched on earlier. Chandler can't get enough of him. He does just about everything. That first free throw hit about every part of the rim, didn't go through. Chandler averaging about 12, 6, and 7. And that doesn't account for as many blocks and steals he gets per game, which I'm sure are eye-popping stats as well. So he looks to make at least one to get to cater the lead back. Yeah, Chandler's about 2.6 steals a game and a block as well. Definitely a defensive threat just as much on offense. And must I say, that one block a game is a rather ferocious block. Ferocious. I'm going to start using that word a lot. Jump shot from Dion White, and it's a nice rebound from Coleman. Hudson gets by his initial defender. Allberry looks to push. Wise in the corner. Back out Chandler, swinging it. Jane Hudson, a corner three. Well contested. Nice offensive rebound from Wise. Gets it blocked. Coleman, a third chance, gets it. Just over four minutes to go to cater up 22 to 19, a three-point lead. Sheehan handling it inside. Floater from Hutton can't get it. Fight for it, and Decatur will get it back. Even with how lively this crowd is, it seems most of the Northeast players still seem very poised. As we see them bring in another press. Wild pass. We got a whistle, and Northeast will get it back. Yeah, and a, a lot of poise, as you said, from a starting lineup consisting of four juniors and a sophomore. So they'll begin a lot of their team back next season. Absolutely, both teams fairly young. Yeah. It's only count two seniors for Northeast, same as Decatur. A lot of promise for both programs in the future, but they're focused on now which team will come away with a win and keep their season alive. Nice deflection. There's a steal from Chandler, but we got to carry. Tried to get around one defender and get to his right. As Coach Johnson says, you can use that left. Chandler definitely very capable of doing so. Speaking of Coach Johnson, how about that suit he's got on tonight? Call that like a navy blue? It's, it's, it's like in between like a royal and a navy, I'd say. Like a dark royal, if that's, well, if that's a color. If that's I don't a think we have to be looking up colors like we've done in previous times with like the passionate pink. Nah, oh, the passionate pink. But definitely a, an interesting shade of blue. Tribe Wise is three. You bet. Big shot, Tribe Wise. All Bear to look to push it before the crowd can get more into it. We got another push off. It's Deion White extending that arm, trying to create space. Decatur gets it back. Yeah, that, one, that one was pretty evident, pretty clear from almost anywhere in the bleachers. Absolutely. When, when you see a defender leave their feet and all of a sudden a lot of space is created. You gotta assume a bump or a push off occurs. Tribe wise, five straight points for Tribe. Mm -hmm. Six point lead for Decatur. Some high screens being set for Albury. Still getting pressured. Look at Chandler all over him. He's gotta kick it out. Sheehan, a three pointer. Johnny Hutton. And we got a foul underneath. It's going to be on Chandler trying to go over the back. 
believe that'll be his second. Yeah, and we talk about Chandler being all over Albury there, but how about Albury just not looking to draw a foul, not looking to panic, you know, start passing or, you know, just staying with it. He knows Chandler's on him, but he's just making the perfect route, route to the basket. Open shooter. It's Johnny Hutton now, another open shooter. It's Albury. They can't get anything to fall in that possession, and Tribe Wise will look to push. Nice crossover and one. Oh, what a sequence from Tribe Wise these last few possessions. That's now seven straight. Looking for eight. Yeah, Wise is having a heck of a run right now. An individual 7 0 run for Tribe Wise. How about it? You mm. see, just a moment ago, drawing the contact, a oh, controlled look at, finish. Look, look at the students in the background getting up out of their seats. I think they all want to storm the court. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> A lot, lot of basketball before that. You know, I'm just saying. I, I know, no, it needed to be said, but I'm just covering any, any possibilities. How about that? The free throw goes in. An individual 8 nothing run for Tribe Wise these last couple of minutes. Northeast, bit of a field goal drought these last few possessions. Looking to get something to go. It's Hutton. Looking for somewhere. Ball up in the air. Jane Hudson has it. Hudson driving in. Can't get it. And they'll stay with Northeast. Based off the players' reactions, it looked like it might have stayed with Decatur if Jane Hudson didn't touch the ball out of bounds. You know, this is definitely something to note. Jaden Hudson has been one of the leading scorers you know, per game for Decatur. And on a night like tonight where he's been generally pretty cold, they're still producing a lot of offense. That's a wild pass. Decatur will get it back. Yeah, and although Jaden has been quiet offensively, you got to acknowledge his defensive presence in this one. Absolutely, all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes the stats don't tell the whole story especially when it comes to things like defensive effort. Baker looking. We'll get it back from Chandler, driving his left, kicking Jane Hudson, another three, in and out Ooh. again. No luck for Hudson. Just can't get it. Going tonight, Albury hanging, can't score. Wise looking to get rid of it, pass was deflected and it'll stay with Decatur. Under a minute to go in the second quarter. Decatur up nine. Got to be happy with this first half if this is what we score is going into halftime. Yeah, but if I'm the Seahawks, I'm looking to extend it. Absolutely. Even more so. Baker to Wise. He's got the hot hand, but he stepped out of bounds. Right back in the game, Jaron Hudson. Coming in for Chandler to make sure he doesn't pick up his th third foul for the second half. I like that. Good yeah. decision. Also giving Chandler a little break going into the half. Absolutely. As Jaron Hudson can pretty much seems like that six man for Decatur as he's picked up Sheehan from full court all over him. Baker trying to interfere the passing lane and bumped Albury on the way. So I believe we'll have a one and one free throw. Cameron Albury at the line. Northeast's primary ball handler. Checking in the game. For Decatur, Noah Tucker coming in. As he puts that headband on. There we go. Even for 31 seconds, got to make sure the hair doesn't get in the face. Yeah. That's the most important part. Not the game, the hair. It's going to be a live ball on this first free throw. And it'll go. Albury will have a second attempt at it. Yeah, Tucker, who just got in the game, was ready to, ready ready to, to take the inbound, yeah. but... Big free throws here. Allberry trying to go two for two. Rattles in and out. 
Coleman tried to corral the rebound, couldn't get it. So Northeast will have another chance at it. Not much of a difference between shot and game clock. Yeah. Great job by Decatur, though, transitioning quickly into, into the team defense right there, picking up their man. Absolutely. Albury seems quite aware of it. Wants to get likely the last shot of this half. Hudson all over him. Albury looking for space. That is a pretty play. So we enter halftime. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, a friendly reminder as you come and go from the gym, if you kindly use the walkways provided, in and out, we'd appreciate it. As that bucket from Albear will make it a 30 to 24 game. Decatur up six going into the second half.
16 more minutes to determine a winner between Northeast and Decatur. We'd like to give a quick shout out to one of our previous admin at Decatur, Mr. Stigler, who is watching the stream in Jamaica. It's a picture he just sent to us. Fair to say SDHS has gone a bit global. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Mr. Stigler and everyone else watching wherever yes. you may be. Big shout out to all our viewers. We appreciate the support no matter who or which team you're supporting. David Chandler sinks an early jump shot. Decatur up eight. Jump shot from Pfeiffer. Long ball rebound goes to Hudson. Mm -hmm. Hudson's been racking up the rebounds. As Coleman goes up, he is pushed, fouled, and will go to the line. For Decatur, coming out of the second half, going into the third quarter, you want to try and do whatever you can to extend this lead. For Northeast, try and create turnovers, turn defense into offense like we always say. Try and cut into this deficit of eight and now nine. <laughs> Coleman looking to go two for two at the line. Does just that. An early 10 point lead. As Allberry will be guarded by Chandler. Agent zero. Gets a deflection, Allberry gets it right back. An athletic finish, what a play. Silencing the crowd. Coleman tried to soar in for a block to no avail, that was a great finish. We'd like to see Hudson get going here. Try Wise looking to stay hot, no, Coleman just slithers right through and gets a layup. Yeah, Coleman's been there all night to clean up the mess, any missed shots, putting him right back up for second chance points. We always emphasize it, mm -hmm. a big part of basketball. Love to talk about second chance opportunities. Very important. Also could be a killer, depending on what side you are. Pfeiffer looking to pass it in, a little behind. Baker the steal, soaring through a huge collision Ooh. in a charge. Anthony Sheehan. Veteran savvy play there by the sophomore guarding the charge. Look at this offensive rebound from Coleman. Possession to go. Didn't even have to put the ball on the ground. Just excellent placement on the floor. Knew where he was and knew what he had to do with it. Just about two minutes through this third quarter. Sheehan looking for somewhere to go. Gets a screen. Screen set by Buttry. Deflection from Wise. It'll stay with Northeast. So a solid first half for Decatur and for Northeast, but for more so Decatur, what would you say is one thing you'd like to critique a little bit? So there's always something to get better at. What would yeah. you, what would you well, say? I mean, obviously we'd be talking about the three-point game, getting that established. Um, maybe the Hudson's playing a tripping factor in that, but they've been playing great on defense. Um, but also I would say securing these rebounds, we've seen Jaden Hudson doing a great job of that as he sinks a shot, as we perfectly timed. That shot, get him going. Yeah, but also just securing these rebounds. They've been doing a really good job of it, but there's been a few times where it's just been kind of bouncing around, leads to some fast, sloppy play. I mean, really, if they can do some of those things, I mean, they're gonna start taking over this game. Absolutely, Sheehan, a three. Coleman did a nice job contesting and Wise corrals the rebound. Chandler pushing it up. Excellent pass, nice pump fake. <laughs> Coleman wanted the and one. Couldn't get it to go, so instead he'll settle for two free throws. While we were talking, Cameron Albury, another bucket for Northeast, a nice floater. Was matched by Jane Hudson's jump shot. And now Coleman at the line. You see us off in the distance between Shamir Johnson and Coleman. You see me in my uh, Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, we're kind of we're a little bit in frame. Stephen went with the standing. Stephen went with the unbuttoned looks. More, yeah. The more unprofessional look. Okay. It's a nice passionate pink color I got on though. Both of Coleman's free throws can't go. So Chandler will meet Alberry up top. Alberry has done a big portion of this ball handling. What a block from Chandler. 
trying to turn defense into offense. Coleman fouled again. Yeah, Coleman, once, when working downhill, Coleman's one of those guys where you can't really stop him. You just got to try and contain him. Sending him to the line, if he's missing his free throws, might be the best way to do it. But Yeah. I mean, it's better than letting him, you know, just charge down. Throw it down. Get an easy bucket. Can Coleman play with a bit of a sprained wrist? Still doesn't seem to bother him that much. Getting yeah. a big shout out to his father, who is a coach of the football team, also working one of the camera angles. Yeah, you can see him on, in the corner there with the blue vest. Blue and white, a lot of people in blue, but. We'll see there, second free throw doesn't go. Multiple shots, can't go, Shaheen and Pfeiffer missed. Part of me was Johnson who missed. And we have a whistle, that's another foul. Pfeiffer's fourth. He will check out of the game. Coming yeah. in, Deion White. We've said his name a fair amount in the first half. He's coming in for Pfeiffer, who we might see on the bench for an extended period of time. We got a whole another quarter and a half to play. He can't commit another foul. Yeah, and that's why we talk about foul trouble, you know. Might not seem like a big issue early, but going into the second half, they start to add up. You have to sit certain guys. Oh, that's pretty. How David about, Chandler. I was about to say, how about David Chandler? Just needs a little bit of space to work with. Free throw underneath, Chase Buttry gets the layup. And an instant timeout call by Northeast. Chandler again, look at here. Creating space and athletic finish. He is another man, along with Coleman, that is very hard to stop when they're driving to the basket. With play styles, I see a lot of uh, prime John Wall in, in David Chandler. Oh. I don't know if anyone really yeah. is familiar with John Wall's game when he was in his prime, but he was a force to be reckoned with when going downhill. Also a great defender. That might be a little Wizards bias, but either yeah. way. Well, no, we kind of stick with the Wizards bias a little bit. I mean, also calling Davin Chandler, David Chandler, Agent Zero. Yep. Throw Gilbert back to Arenas. Gilbert Arenas. Also calling Col Coleman the... Uh, Chris Epps Porzingis, the unicorn. As you see as us there we are. showed right there. Can't see it, but Coach Coleman is uh, showing off some moves behind the camera. I appreciate everyone watching <laughs> at home. Don't know if you, uh, if anyone at home peeped that uh, bag of Sour Patch watermelon we had on the table. That is an empty bag, ladies and gentlemen. A completely gone. I like to call that the uh, pre-announcing snack that we both uh, like to dine on. David Chandler, corner three, in and out. And it'll go to Northeast. One thing I have noticed four minutes through, doesn't seem like the crowd's as into it as Decatur has managed to extend their lead. Crowd trying to look a way to get back into it. Yeah, no, and I think a little bit is as that. As right on right cue. Right on cue. Never mind. We'll just, you know, we'll just speak anything we want and into works. existence tonight. Looks like, looks like Coach Coleman and Mr. Hill might have had something to do with that. Trying to rally up the troops. Similar to what Frankie Buxbaum did in the game against Oxen Hill. Would always like to shout out our student athletes. Coleman gets his own miss, kicks it. Chandler, Baker. Looking inside for Coleman again. Draws another foul, can't get the N1 to go. <laughs> Wants it so bad. You, you, would, you would have thought he's the one picking up the fouls the way he's reacting. I mean, he's, I mean, it's, it's not a, you know, Dramatic reaction by any means, but Coleman, you can tell he's a little bit upset that he's not getting these and one opportunities, not getting them to go. Absolutely, the foul is on Chase Buttery, his third for Northeast, first free throw short. Mm -hmm. Coach Johnson looks to encourage Coleman at the line to make at least one. Yeah. And you got to applaud Coleman for, you know, working on his free throw shooting even with that wrist. And a few of his teammates were saying it wasn't too pretty at first. Look at Tri Wise. Using his length. I've seen him at the gym at times throughout the school day shooting with the left hand. But no matter how many reps you do in a short period of time, you're always going to be more comfortable with your dominant hand. For Coleman, that's his right. Albury gets it back. Chandler wanted to double dribble. Albury driving. Look at Chandler getting the block, getting the rebound. Oh, man. Pushing Baker. And a foul. 
Chandler's just all over the place as he was against Oxen Hill as well. And without Pfeiffer, Northeast starting to play a little bit more sloppy. Yeah, so that'll be Johnson's third foul. Some more turnovers. Johnson, their leading scorer against Bennett with 25 points. Seems like Alberry's been the big contributor on offense. Another missed free throw at the line. See what Baker can do. Misses both. Rebound Dion White. Three minutes to go. Decatur up 13. Crowd into it. And we have a whistle. Another foul. That foul's on Baker, and that's his fourth. So a little bit of foul trouble on both sides for both teams, number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pfeiffer and Baker both at four, four fouls apiece. As Coach Johnson wants Decatur in a 2-3 zone off this inbound. They had Chandler and Coleman trying to deflect the inbound pass. Three-point attempt goes in and out for Johnny Hutton. And Jaron Hudson checking in the game for Baker. We'll take it up. Hudson a pump fake. Giving it back to Chandler. Kicking. Hudson goes baseline. Oh, big block. Shamar Johnson looking to push Alberry. Calling for a play. Trying to get moving off the ball. Shot from Buttry. Nothing but net. Gene Hudson hit a jump shot a few possessions ago, but he travels there. Coach Johnson got in his defensive stance saying that he kept his pivot foot. Nonetheless, the whistle's blown. Northeast gets it back. Yeah, no video replay or video review in uh, high school, unfortunately. Alberry stops himself. That's a pretty play. Cameron Alberry stopping on the dime and switching the jump shot. Some pretty footwork displayed there. As Coach O'Day tries to get the Northeast crowd into it, try and change the momentum. Jaron Hudson gets the look, can't get the floater to go. Alberry stepped through and a whistle on the floor. That's Chandler's third. These last minute and 24 seconds. Big thing I don't want to see is Chandler picking up his fourth foul. Going into the fourth. He's their primary defender. He will guard whoever is handling the ball. Gotta play smart here, at least until the fourth. Three-point attempt from Sheehan, can't go. Follow-up, no. Looking for a third chance. Dribbled off their foot. Johnny Hutton dribbled it off his foot. Decatur gets possession back. Deion White coming on, as well as the headband, Noah Tucker. Coming in for Jaron Hudson. Looks like he made his way to our athletic trainer. Hopefully everything's okay with Jaron Hudson. We'll see Tribe Wise pushing Jaden Hudson. Weird angle, can't get it. And Northeast ends up with it. Under a minute to go. Sheehan will bring it up at deflection. Chandler with the steal. Chandler, the layup. And a quick timeout call by Coach Johnson. Decatur extends it back up to double digits. We'll be back in a minute.
We're back after that break. 50.9 seconds to go. To get it up by 11. Yeah. Quick note, Jaron Hudson back on the bench after seeing the athletic trainer. Student section looking to get into it. Albury picks up his dribble. Sheehan has it. 20 second differential between shot and game clock. Wants a screen. Going up with it. Had it deflected on the way up. Hudson, Chandler looked to push. He got 23 seconds left. They don't seem to care. Layup, can't get it. Wise on the follow up. Causes defender too small. It's a 13 point lead, 15 seconds to go. Albury, a quick three on the other end. Nothing but net. Ooh, what a response from I feel Albury. like I'm announcing hockey right now. <laughs> Back and forth, six seconds to go. Hudson, hesitation dribble. Working through and will finally have a chance to take a breath. My goodness. <laughs> See here on the other end, on there. Chandler the missed layup, Wise the follow through. Yeah, Wise has been putting together a pretty nice game for himself. And then just moments later, Cameron Albury drained a three. Cut it back down to 10. Hudson first free throw looks perfect. The start of this fourth quarter, if you're a kid, you really Want to try and keep your foot on the gas like you always say and really put an emphasis on this lead. Don't let Northeast hang around. They're going to try and be quick with it. That three-point attempt is blocked. And we will go into the fourth quarter to cater a comfortable 12-point lead. We'll be back in a minute. It's a good thing most of these uh, students in the student section play baseball or soccer, as you can see. Trying to shoot those pom poms through. An oh, imaginary got hoop. one. I mean, we're we're not seeing much success here. I, I I got him at like one for thirty right now. That was a very disappointing performance from the student section. As you can see, Coach Coleman. Catching me on my phone. Always catching uh, me at the worst slacking. time. Shout out Coach Coleman for always catching me at the worst time. It's all <laughs> love. Eight minutes to go. I'm now off my phone and ready for this fourth quarter. See, we've got Hayden Johnson in for the Eagles. Maybe some. Try and get a new look on offense. Yeah. Speaking of which, look at Hayden Johnson's got some shoe game to him. I mean, look at those. Some interesting shoes. That's all very some tight ball handling and jump shot is good. Mm. I must say, Cameron Allberry has impressed me a lot this game. Yeah, he's been playing great. And on that last one, it looked like he lost his footing for a little bit, stuck with it. You can barely even tell. Can't get too ahead of yourselves here for Decatur. We got a foul there. Tribe Wise, who's played excellent today. That's only his first foul. So no worries there. Yeah, what what a game from Trod. Yeah, he had that short run to himself, and other than that, he's had some excellent rebounds. Some other points here and there as well. Tribe Wise doing his thing tonight when he's needed the most. At the line, Johnny Hutton, a senior at 6'4 for Northeast, drains in the first, cuts it to a single-digit lead for Decatur. We see Dion White going to the scores table. These last seven minutes and 28 seconds. Really got to grind it out. Both teams got to want to play perfect basketball. So we'll see Hayden Johnson's short stint on the court come to an end. A solid 32 seconds. So we'll see Chandler. Northeast showing some pressure here early. 
Nice shot by Tucker on the help. Lost the dribble, but gets it to Jane Hudson. Tribe wise, spinning, hanging, can't get it. Right now it's an eight point lead for Decatur. Just a minute into this fourth. Alberry has it, a pull up three now. Short, Wise gets it. They'll look to play with some pace. Coleman, that's a pretty play. Putting the lead back out to double digits. Is that DJ? Got a whistle on the floor. We'd like to shout out another one of our viewers, DJ Martini, listening from the Glen Burnie area. Again, we appreciate all the viewers. Mm -hmm. Shout out Just to the Martini family. What a great last name, Martini. That's excellent. Open shooter, it's Hayden Johnson. Can't get it. We got a foul on the floor, and it'll stay here. Looking to inbound again, Hayden Johnson's three-pointer can't go. Northeast gets a second chance at it. That can't go. Loose ball, Tucker has it, pushing up to Wise. And the layup is good. Another great finish. Back uh, up to 12. Yeah, I'm gonna keep saying it, Wise is having himself a night. Layup, they get it right back in a quick timeout. Yeah. But back to, back to the Martini, you've never heard of Martini's lawn services. Martini's Lawn Services. I'm huh? shocked. You never heard of them? I need to be better. Uh, uh oh, in the meantime, we got some party in the USA going. And we heard this last night the DJ tricked out the student section. We got a few participators. The senior sing courtside, embarrassing. That's unacceptable. Yeah, they, they don't want to show school spirit. It's all right. They just, want to, they just want to sit and look cool. I get it. I get it. You know, I was, I was when Coach Coleman catch, uh, caught me looking at my phone moments ago, I was actually reading a text uh, from one of my good friends, Owen Kinnear, who said he couldn't believe that we compared David Chandler to prime John Wall. I don't know what that meant, but I was a bit taken aback that. Is that an that. insult to John Wall? I, I don't know, but I just want to note that. Tucker's three is blocked. It's a great recovery from Alberry. Wow. Yeah, Alberry's been all over the place for the Eagles. I mean, really keeping him, keeping him in this, trying to keep it close. Wise open jump shot, can't get the layup. Got to follow a shot, dribbles it off his shin. Nice kick. Jane Hudson, a wide open three is good. Bang, there we go. Bang. Hudson from deep. Now the, now the front row's on their feet. I guess that's what it takes. Alberry looking to quiet the crowd. Can't get it. It'll stay with Northeast. Yeah, and you gotta love Coach Johnson's. You know what? There it is. This is not sponsored. We're just generous people. Martini's Never Lawn heard? Service. Ah, oh, man. If you don't know, well, now you know. You gotta see if Owen can uh, hit you up with a hat. A hat? Do you have a hat? I do not. Oh, they even do merchandise. Yeah. You're getting the whole nine yards. Uh, Owen has a hat, so. Lawn Service and merchandise. Yeah. Can't get enough of it. That's how I heard about it. You know, you got advertised through merchandise, you know? Well, you just informed about a couple hundred people. <laughs> First free throw is good, Dion White. Coming off the bench for Northeast. Has played a fair amount of minutes. Let's see Hayden Johnson check back in. You wonder what role Coach O'Day sees Johnson, maybe a possible shooter. Maybe some defensive presence, whatever it is. Yeah, I don't know, but he just sat back down. He's been he's been going to Johnson at times in this fourth quarter here early. So we see Deion White went one of two at the line. Dribble handoff, Noah Tucker in. Jane Hudson, that's a deep three. Oh! From the logo. That's what I said. He needs to hit one shot. I'm telling you. And everything else 
is a heck lot easier. Extends the lead to 15. Yep. And Northeast. You got to love that Coach Johnson still has that same intensity. He's playing defense with his hands up. Three pointer. Shaheen, no. Nice rebound. Tucker. Chandler pushing. Coleman has some space. Doesn't want to shoot it. Wants to drive in. Kick. Hudson, another one. No. Oh, almost. You would have heard, heard the crowd explode. Aubrey stop, pop. Bang. Oh, my. That was from deep. That was from way downtown. Coach Johnson emphatically pointing at one of his defenders. He wants those hands up. Yeah. Hopefully the Seahawks fans will have their hands up when the clock strikes zero to get her up 12 halfway through the fourth. We just got word that the uh, Martini's Lawn Service hats are on point. So, again, just noting, we can't get enough of it. So, we just had to had to reference it one more time. I, I Wouldn't be shocked if we reference <laughs> it again. I just love our ability to find random things and just and hold on to yeah, it. Yeah, and just go in and, depth on everything about it. It's great. It's the beauty of announcing a game. It's the best of both worlds. Coleman cross court to Chandler. As they break that press with ease. Four and a half to go. Pfeiffer back in the game for Northeast for likely the remainder of the game. Wise can't catch that pass. It'll go back to Northeast. Again, Pfeiffer playing with four fouls. As we see from about 30 minutes away from us, Why High defeated Queen Anne's in their regional final. So why high will remain and keep their season alive. Only team to bring them down so far is a team we're talking about right now, the Stephen Decatur Seahawks. Pfeiffer steps into a three. You bet. Yeah, Decatur's got to be careful. The at Eagles one are starting point, to get the shooting going a little bit. That can at, definitely hurt them. At one point up by 15. Now nine and back up to 11. My goodness. Just a huge swing. The pace they play at. Mm. It can be dangerous at times, but not right there. Get another look at Coleman. Looked like he might have had a little stare down at the end. Finishing through contact. That's Shamar Johnson's fourth foul. So both him and Pfeiffer in some foul trouble here. Halfway through the fourth. And not ideal. For the Eagles, but if Absolutely. you're the Seahawks, got to keep playing. There's still lots of time left, and the Eagles are starting to find their shooting a little bit. Fight for another three, no. Fight for it, goes over the backboard, no whistle. They were expecting out of bounds. Wise gets a rebound. Coleman pushing, gets it stripped from Albury, and they'll keep it. Under four minutes to go, 62 to 50. We'll see Dion White check in the game. Pfeiffer back out. Northeast has to play some perfect basketball here with 3.46 to go. Chandler looking for somewhere to go, finds Hudson. That's Jaden Hudson as he will, guarded by Albury, reset it and give it to Chandler. What a luxury it is for Decatur to have Baker, Hudson, and Chandler all able to handle the ball with ease. Hudson, another one, no. Coleman fighting for it, couldn't corral it. Allberry, nice move, can't get it. The layup missed. Johnny Hutton missed. Oh, look at Jaden Hudson. The scrape on the floor. Baker, the layup. 
Hudson diving on the floor to get the ball and get it up court. Even with the 14 point lead, Coach Johnson always making sure his players don't step off the gas. 64 to 50. Taking a look back, everyone diving for the ball. It's what you love to see from both sides. But in the end, Sakari Baker laid it in. Decatur, a 14 point lead with under four minutes to go. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Alberry immediately off the break gets it to go. Cambridge South Dorchester in their regional final against Snow Hill up 18 with a minute left. So it looks like South Dorchester will keep their season alive. Decatur looking to do the same thing. Nice kick out. Hudson will slow it back up. Again, up 12. Clock is your friend. Hudson guarded by Sheehan. Five on the shot clock. Chandler driving baseline. Couldn't get the angle. Shot clock goes off. If you want to look at it in a positive way, you wasted 30 seconds. Not many more of those time intervals to go. Coach Johnson doesn't want them to press. Yeah, time is definitely your friend. Waste as much time. Yeah. And if you're going to have a possession without any points, at least take some time off the clock. Fourth Northeast to slow it down. So we have an offensive foul. Eagles can't believe it. Uh-oh. Coach has got to be careful. And we got attacked. That gets the crowd into it. And he's still letting him hear it. A time like that where you see a coach in the fourth quarter get a technical foul. It shows desperation. It shows that they're a little built up on emotions, yeah. letting, the, and, letting and, the emotions get high. <laughs> and now the student section has some energy after that. Absolutely. They're on their feet. Definitely Take a look a back bit, at what what little bit extra energy now. What caused that? See Coleman setting up for a charge. Definitely emphasized by Coleman. It's hard to tell if there was contact, but there definitely wasn't a lot of contact. Either way, Northeast fans not happy about it. Mm. Hudson's second free throw couldn't go. Decatur up 13. It's Northeast we saw there starting to lose a little bit of composure. 2.21 to go, 65-52. So we have some people telling us that Bryson Coleman looked like a soccer player there. That's no insult to soccer players, but they're no, known we, we to be can, some good actors. We can insult soccer players a little bit. They're, they're good actors. Nice steal from oh. Alberry. And the layup is good. Nice Two minutes ago, Robert. can't let off the gas. Yeah, Coach Johnson not a fan of that. A little bit of a careless turnover there. Timeout call. Coach Johnson, like you said, not happy. Even with a lead this big, you can't play careless. 
11 point lead, we'll be back in a minute. And there's still a lot of time left, two minutes to go, but we would like to note if Decatur does escape with the win, as Wise goes up with the layup, yes! Big bucket there. Great. Back to what I was saying, if Decatur does end up winning this game, we would like to bring you guys along as we will do some on-court interviews. Instead of having the players come to, come to us, we'll come to them. Maybe even some fans from the student section. Decatur gets a turnover, playing with pace. 15 point lead with 90 seconds left. That might this just is, be icing on the exactly cake. exactly what you want if you're Decatur. Pfeiffer, desperation shot, no. Wise trying to recover. And Johnson turns it over. People in the fans are starting to sense what's going on. Under 90 seconds left. Don't want to make any assumptions, but Seems quite out of reach for Northeast, especially with Decatur playing slow. Oh, man down. Pfeiffer takes a spill. Hudson gets it back again. Decatur, you can tell they're trying to drain some clock. They can work it to under a minute if they want to. Hudson, a smart play so far. Lost in another whistle. That might be Pfeiffer's night. And that, that will be it for Pfeiffer. His fifth. He's done. Student section lets him know as they wave him goodbye. That'll send Hudson to the line. That's not what you want to do. Jaden Hudson leading the way in free throw percentage for the Seahawks. If there's a guy you don't want to foul, it would be Jaden Hudson. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I don't want to jinx anything, but I think at this point it's fair to say that the Keter might very well be walking away with a regional championship. Up 15 with about a minute to go. What a season it's been. It was a bumpy start. And I remember Coach Johnson saying, once he gets his players back, there's no looking back. Yeah, and they have been on a roll since then. A lot of, a lot of close losses early in the year. We even saw some overtime losses, just really unfortunate from the Seahawks, but they came back from the holiday break really strong, and they've been, they've been cruising ever since. Absolutely, and they have not looked back only getting better. Hudson's second free throw won't go. 70 to 54. Minute three to go. Coleman tried to inbound it. Refs did say it was Northeast ball. Looks like a timeout called by Coach Johnson. Minute three to go. 70 to 54. What a game by the Seahawks. Using home court advantage to their advantage. said it any better myself. Up 16, minute three to go. We got a whistle, we'll see what, what's going on. 
little bit of confusion going on right now. More whistles blown, but again, like I said, it should stay with Northeast if I'm not mistaken. So they're gonna, they're gonna try and save some time. We got some chance by the student section. Oh, what a three from Albury. Not good timing for the warm the bus up chant. Albury banks in a three. Yeah. Still a long mountain to climb, down 13. That's pretty, that's pretty funny though. Yeah. I mean, I will say this, there is one big critique I have for the Seahawks right now, and it's nothing to do with the players on the court or the team or the coaches. It's the student section, they're still sitting down. Well, we're assuming as what a shot there. One of our athletic directors, Coach DeBronze. The shout out Coach DeBronze. Even Mr. Hill in frame there to now the that's left. Now that's a side profile. <laughs> that luscious hair. Oh, there hair. we go. Uh, Coleman. We'll move it away. At the stop. Shout out to Miss Fenzel Margot. Yeah, my a best. teacher here. My best co-host. I mean. Wow. But <laughs> I kid, I kid. But no, Miss Margot was great to have on few weeks ago we appreciate everyone that has helped out for days that we can't make it coach Coleman some varsity boys and girls basketball players even a JVY high girls basketball player joined in once another whistle there we've had lots of guests and as we go to college we hope we hope to uh, leave our legacy and inspire more to help out with this as Something good for the sport and the community. It's Baker at the line, 48 seconds to go. Fans are anxious. They want that final yeah. buzzer to sound. And I, I think that's what it is. I, I critiqued them a little bit for you know sitting down, but I think they're just they're just anxious. They're waiting for it to happen. So we'll see some bench players come in. We see Matt Beck checking in, Davion Rounds checking in, Mo Ramadan checking in. Student section loves it. Now they're on their feet. What a game. What a game for David Chandler and Jaden Hudson. Both seniors, Mo Ramadan, Davion Rounds. We'll even see the Loring brothers check in after this free throw. See Whole Matt bench Beck, unit. Matt Beck coming in. Crowd roars. There we go. They're starting to feel it. What an effort by that starting five. As you can just feel the energy in the crowd. They want that final buzzer, buzzer uh -huh. to sound. But they got to wait about 35 seconds. She hand a three. Lauren can't get the rebound. They'll have a third shot at a three. All berries can't go. Back on the ground, no. Another three-point attempt. Four times the charm. Loring will look to give it to Beck. Beck getting rid of it, gives it to Loring. Loring lost it, Beck just trying to kill time. Loring has him out around. Crowd wants him to shoot it. Come on, put it up. Now just dribble it Smart out. play. That'll do it. Stay tuned Ladies with us. Gentlemen. As you leave the Regional gym, you the Decatur, sport. South and Region champs. Know, you take your trash, stay tuned we'll with us. We, we plan to do some on-court interviews. Up next state quarterfinals. Stay we are excited. Social media. We'll be back in a moment. Stay After tuned. After all the games are completed tonight, tomorrow the eight remaining teams will be reseeded by record, regular season record. So check out social media or mpssaa.org for the updated bracket. Should be up tomorrow afternoon. Check it out, game will be Saturday. All tickets again will be online only, so make sure if you are you do plan on coming to the game, you have to buy them online. Again, check out mpssaa.org. Congratulations to your Seahawks on the 3A South Region 2 Regional Championship. First time since 2018, the boys have 
taking the regional crown home. Again, check out mpssaa.org or Stephen Decatur's social media for an updated schedule. Again, thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting Stephen Decatur Athletics. And as always, we'll see you next time. We're here on the court trying to pull away some players for interviews in a moment. But what a moment this is for Decatur Sports. I welcome you, Coach Johnson. First off, congratulations. I just Thank want you. to ask you, how does it feel? Regional champs, how does it feel? Well, I'm just so excited for these kids. You know, we had a little adversity in the beginning of the year, and they came together. They love each other. They care about one another, and they deserve everything they got Absolutely. tonight. Absolutely. We commend you for your efforts. Great team win. We'll be supporting you throughout it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you again. Thank you. They're like family to him. They deserve everything that's been handed to him. Hey, hey. We would like to welcome in some student section members. Let's bring them on. Real Here, quick. I'll give you guys the mic. Here you go. I'm welcome along. Alex Navarro, yeah. Matty Rankin, Jake Carson, senior sitting courtside. How does it feel supporting the troops? It was a, it was a great win, uh, absolute domination the entire game, and um, yeah, it was it's very, very atmosphere, great atmosphere. We heard the chants. Yeah, the, the chants are the best part, man. I, I just love being here, and you know, I've been to every single one of these games. I, I just love it. As we see, Bryson Coleman cutting down the nets. What a great moment for Decatur. Woo! We see the boys starting to cut down the nets. Moments you cherish. Zakari Baker trying to get his piece. They definitely worked. I saw de some of them really put into action the guard rebounds. I mean, Jaden Hudson did an unbelievable job. Took him a little bit to get the shooting going, but man, the defensive effort on the boards, you know, guard man to man by Jaden Hudson was unbelievable tonight, especially tribe wise, the incredible run he went on. David Chandler battled through adversity all year. It's so deserving. You can see the pure enjoyment and excitement coming from everyone. They deserve this. Senior Davion Rounds getting his piece. Great tradition. 
Mm -hmm. Might be one of the best traditions in all of sports, cutting down the nets. Mo Ramadan. It's going to be a great Friday at Decatur tomorrow. Of course, Matt Beck getting his piece. A great role player that comes off the bench. Really always there to support his teammates, always out there giving 100%. We're trying to get trying to get a player interview right now. Understandably, don't want to rip them away from the moment. Absolutely, we but. won't take anyone away from their great moment. We're gonna see if we can welcome in someone like Tribe Wise. We'll see a little moment moments up here. there. The team's water boy. Just Everyone a great moment. Even even the water boy plays a vital role in this team's success. He's earned that piece of the net. How about the confetti on the floor? You like the confetti? I like the confetti. It's actually a little bit slippery. Like, say, where some of these sure large amounts are piled up. Yep. We hope everyone has enjoyed the season so far with our commentary and people's gameplay. It's been a great season. Again, I can't emphasize enough how deserving this is. So again, if you stay tuned with us, we're going to try and welcome in a player in a couple seconds, a couple minutes. So again, don't want to take them away from their moment, but we'll see. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. There he goes. I mean, as a player, these moments feel sweet. But as a coach, that even is sweeter. Seen the team progress throughout the season, coached them up, led the team to success. A very, very sweet moment for Coach BJ. See, we look to cut off the final piece of the net. Well, hold it up. There, there it we is. go. What a moment. We'll welcome in. We'll welcome in Bryson Coleman. Mike's, for, Mike's right there. Mike's right there. Interview. Mike's yours. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, Bryson. Great performance tonight. First Thank off, you. first thoughts, first reaction. I mean, you guys just won the regional championship. Yeah. How are you feeling? It feels awesome. I mean, we worked so hard all season and everything, but I mean, it's great feeling. We're gonna enjoy it tonight, but tomorrow we got work to do for Saturday. Uh -huh. I like that. Job's not done, Bryson. Great performance. I want to hold you up. Go celebrate. Go enjoy Thank it. You. Good luck for the rest of the season. I appreciate you. Let me welcome in senior 
Davion Rapp, oh, last right. I feel a regional champ your senior year. It's a great feeling. Try and get the state champ. Three more games. Laser focus on that yeah, state champ. I like I that. Respect three, it. three more games. Job's Keep not up. done. Don't leave me hanging. Yo, Cam. We're going to try and welcome in our team manager, Cameron Harris, in a couple of moments after he gets his pictures. Yeah. All right. We'll welcome on Cam Harris, the team manager, <laughs> playing a vital role in this team's success, keeping them straight, keeping them organized, keeping the book right in front of us every game. Cam, you've been with this team all four years as their manager. How does it feel to see to witness this? I mean, it just feels great, you know. Uh, just being here, watching these guys practice every day, work hard every day, just putting that work to get here. Uh, I feel like they can do anything right now. Yeah, absolutely. And as Davion said, it three more games. Looking forward. I mean, how do you feel about this team? Uh, I think I think we could go. We're gonna go all the way. Yeah. We're very going all very the way. very confident words. I mean, what an unbelievable experience here, Camp. Thank you for joining us. I'll let you keep celebrating, my man. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. So we're going to try and look for one more person. So, we apologize. Some players are camera shy. Yeah. They don't want to be interviewed. They, they, they worked hard. They won a regional championship. They, they deserve to be a little bit shy if they want. I'm going to welcome in the Loin brothers. Lucas, Caleb, I'm going to ask you, how does it feel, regional champs? Feels nutty. Okay, how does it feel, regional champs? Freshman year, it feels great, baby better response anyways <laughs> congratulations keep it going let's go yeah great point Caleb Warren said I got I got three more I got three more years of this also three games left in the tank mm -hmm. So that'll do it for tonight's broadcast. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Regional chance. We got the result we wanted. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Three more for the state Here championship. We go. We're signing off. Adam, Steven. We'll catch you guys. Let's do it.